Welcome to the Daily Word verse by verse. Grab your Bible and follow along as we study the book of Colossians. Keep in mind, I'm using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Also keep in mind that these Daily Word studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP The Bible Perspective. That's BP The Bible Perspective. So like and share these videos and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. Okay, we're in Colossians chapter 1, and as Paul's fashion is, he is unloading a lot of information that is pertinent to us. Now, uh, this section, when we pick up at verse 11, uh, is going, it, it, there, he's bringing in some religious aspects, some philosophical aspects, uh, meaning religion, other religions, uh, mystery religions. And he's going to bring them together, but also he's going to explain why legally, legally we're saved. Um, they're the <coughs> popular expression today, you know, when people say, show me the receipts. Well, I'm going to show you the receipts uh, in these upcoming verses. And these are receipts that you'll be able to say, here are the receipts. This is why, see, I'm saved. And you should be able to know that you know that you know why. And here is the other interesting thing. It has nothing to do with whatever you, in your human effort, could, can, would contribute. So after saying in the previous verses, Christ... Um, Christ, who is, um, 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 the fullness of the Godhead, all of the fullness of the divine nature of God dwells in Jesus Christ. And this figure, God, with this figure, the man, Jesus Christ, who has the entire fullness of the nature of God in him is the one who was working in our behalf. Um, and then he's going to come up, uh, wow, when we get down to verse then 20, and uh, so in 22, it's going to be amazing. But it's important to understand, see, what he's saying here. And, and, and the reason why I, I'm kind of walking through this slowly, because... Whenever I talk with someone about salvation, and, and by the way, if I want to bring this into today's vernacular, the various different doctrines of salvation is held by people today, whether it's being baptized in water, holiness teaching, living right, plug in whatever, they never ever talk about these verses. Okay, so verse 11 says, You were also circumcised in him with the circumcision not done with hands, by the putting off of the body of flesh, in the circumcision of the Messiah. Now, we see a hint here of Paul pushing back against the Jewish infestation in this Gentile church. Meaning that there were some Jews who were teaching, again, aspects of Judaism. We will get further into that more. He's going to elaborate more in that. Um, the, 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 and the reason why, because notice he says, you were circumcised in him with the circumcision not done with hand. We go back into the Old Testament. The reason why God instituted circumcision was in Abraham. Now, it was incorporated in the law. But its origins comes that it was a distinguishing mark between the covenant people, which God began with Abraham, and uh, it was so it was a distinguishing mark where God would cut off the foreskin uh, of the male genital um, of the people of God. So anyone who is not circumcised, you know what I mean. That there is a um, 
hanging foreskin, and they would cut that off. That was circumcision. Now, if you've done it, it's painful at any age. If you've done, <laughs> excuse me, if you've done it as as a um, older man, I don't know how that would work today because you would have anesthetic, but it's still painful. We have indication in scriptures where people who were circumcised and it was painful and they were sore for anywhere from three to three days to a week. Okay. Um, so God told Abraham and then at that time, Abraham circumcised every male um, in his household, the slave, the slave's children were the male. So whoever was in Abraham's all the males in Abraham, under Abraham's rule, they were circumcised. This was later, again, incorporated as a command in the law of Moses. And if you remember in the book of Galatians, then these Judaizers tried to come in and, and, and instill or try to compel the Gentile church that they needed to be circumcised in order to keep the law, in order to be saved. It wasn't as big as an issue, but as we can see, it is an issue. Now also keep in mind that not even the Israel throughout their generations always kept it. Um, for example, we know that um, the generation, the second generation who actually went into the promised land because the first generation had rebelled against God and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Well, a very interesting story that happened that right before they were to go into, because what had happened was all of that first generation had died off. That's what God had said. That all, <laughs> all of you all are going to die off. So when you read the book of Deuteronomy, and when you read the closing chapters of Numbers, you're reading really that 40th year, which in which at that time, the last of the first generation people were dying off. Um, Aaron had died off. Miriam had died off. And so the only two that were left out of that entire generation was Moses, who God said, you're not going to even go into the promised land. <coughs> um, and then there was Joshua and Caleb. Those two would go into the promised land. Well, after Moses, um, right before, um, again, right before Moses died, and right before they were to, I'm sorry, no, even after Moses died and before they were to go into the uh, promised land, they had to circumcise that generation of males because during that 40 years, no one got circumcised. And of course, during Israel's uh, topsy-turvy, right, apostasy, they wasn't circumcising. So the idea of circumcision um, was something that the Jews were commanded to keep under the law. Um, but it was only a, um, a mark of distinction between God's covenant people. In other words, if you, it, it was to the Jew. It wasn't even to the Gentile. So when he said that you were circumcised, because obviously there were Jews, in a sense, taunting the people. Well, you haven't been circumcised. So when Paul makes the statement here, you were circumcised in him with the circumcisions done, not without hands. He says, by putting off the body of flesh in the circumcision of the Messiah. Now, it's going to explain that. And let me say this, because when you see these kinds of language, the writers of the New Testament, Paul in particular, Jesus also implied this technique of using terminology that people could identify with. In other words, he's using language. Now, does, it, does he actually mean that God t took a spiritual knife and then spiritually circumcised the spiritual gentilia. And then, of course, how will that apply to women? The point is, it's not meant to be taken that way. But in a sense, it was meant, what he's saying is, you have been set apart by the working of Jesus. And that's what he means by that. Now, he's going to also, in the next verse, he's going to use the term baptism. I mean, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that in the next video. What does he mean by baptism? Because these are uh, uh, things that people stumble over today. That if, say, my point is, what's amazing is that the people who uh, talk about baptism never talk about circumcision. Yet he's talking about circumcision here. 
Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to pick it up in verse 12 in the next video, so I will see you then.